We are back with Season 5, Episode 21, Scaremaster. This is the episode in which it's Halloween, and by golly, Fluttershy is going to be a part of it. But it doesn't go well. But then it goes great. But then it goes beautifully. But then it goes badly. But then it's okay. But then things are great. But things are awful. But then... I want to once again gush. I know I bring this up often, and I don't care. It's so good! The animations, the, the facial animations especially, are so good at this point in time. Like, God! <laughs> I, I, I love good animation, what can I say? Regardless. So, gush, gush, gush. So, Fluttershy goes into this whole thing where she has her own little comfort zone that she retreats to, to not have to deal with something that she doesn't like. Yeah, been there. How many of you been there? <laughs> of course, I'm not even live yet, because Twitch has been very twitchy lately. Probably because 700,000 people are streaming Cyberpunk right now. Including me tomorrow, 9 a.m. EST. But yeah, back in the day, when I was younger, I used to have things I would do, mental exercises that I would do in order to specifically try and deal with uh, uncomfortable thoughts, uncomfortable realities, stuff like that. You know, see something that disturbs me, well, I have my retreat point, right? Hell, I've actually talked about this before. There are several times in my life where my, this sounds so stupid to say it out loud, my bathroom was my safe zone. And that's where I would retreat to, you know, to take a shower or whatever, and I'd just sit there and, Not gonna, not gonna think about it. Not gonna think about it. Just gonna sit here, you know. So again, mood. <laughs> yeah, everyone needs a safe zone. It was more accurately just the shower or the tub or whatever you want to think of that for me. Not the bathroom as a whole. And that's where I just go to be like, yep, no, I'm out. I'm out. Peace. I was a lot more suicidal back in the day than I am nowadays. Which is funny, because I'm more okay with killing myself now. But, you know, there's a difference. <laughs> so then, Angel has to come and screw it all up. Thanks, Angel. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so Angel's like, hey, I need carrots. And so she has to go out on, on you know, Nightmare Night, which sucks. <sighs> I mean, this is kind of Fluttershy's fault, because she wasn't prepping for this, but come on. Well, later Angel tries to push her to be more assertive, but at this point, I think we can definitively say it's just him being a dick. I don't know. It could be either, though, because he does bounce around on that one a bit, if you pay attention. Sometimes he's, you know, her, you know, her courage, for lack of a better way to put it, and the rest of the times he's a dick. Anywho, oh, damn it. Mm -hmm. I do simplify, sympathize with Fluttershy here, though. I really do. There are several things that I don't like. Gore, realistic violence, horror, you know, anime. <laughs> so, I actually sympathize with her quite a lot in this episode. But I do gotta say, man... This is just like super wholesome. Like, pay attention to the to to the to the festivities as she's out and about in the town. It's just oh god, I wish I could be someplace. I could live someplace that had that kind of local um, friendly neighborhood kind of thing. I know places. Well, I assume places like that still exist in real life. Uh, I have not encountered them in quite a while. Uh, gosh, that would have been going back to. Uh, I would have been eight the last time I have I have lived in a place like that. I can even name the spot. I'm not going to tell you, but yeah, I, I can picture it in my head too. It's a nice neighborhood. I mean, I live in a decent neighborhood now, but I wouldn't exactly go out and be part of a festivity with people right now. You know what I mean? Anyways, just saying, one of these days I'm going to move to Ponyville and it's going to be awesome. And then I'll look like this, and then it'll be less awesome. <laughs> Anyways. So Granny's like, you don't know how terrible and terrifying this is. And I love Big Mac's reaction, which is just, 
Really? Really, Granny? <laughs> Meanwhile, Twilight's Castle is super haunted. I want to bring up a point here because it's going to come up later. Twilight's Castle, it looks terrifying and, and death doom. They even do the classic, uh, the classic angle, which I'm, I'm, I'm demonstrating this wrong. It's, it's, we'll use the as yet unnamed Star Destroyer here. Yeah, like, like, like the, the angle is all up, like, like, hang on, the castle is, uh, instead of just being straight on or whatever, it's like super angular and like kind of like this, and so you can kind of see it. God, I'm, I'm doing this from mirror, so forgive me. And so you got like this long, long shot going up to it, and yeah, there's the moonlight, the hard shadow and all that, and all that fun stuff. Uh, yeah, this isn't the hammer. You weren't here earlier, were you, Baron? We actually built this on camera uh, today. I haven't named her yet. We need to name you. What is your name? Oh. So, <clears throat> and yeah, the swinging sign, like context. Twilight's Castle is super not scary, right? But context can make things scary. We've actually talked about this topic before in previous Halloweens. In fact, we talked about this uh, with regards to the Age of Ultron trailer, which, because this was before Age of... God, I've been streaming so long. I've been streaming since before Avengers 2 came out. That's a weird thought. But yeah, context can make things terrifying, right? You know, there are no strings on me. Context is what really makes something truly terrifying. It's not like you know, oh, yeah. you gotta you gotta have a visual presentation. There's, there's presentation matters. I want you to remember that. So, anyways, we see the the castle, and it's it is played as a, stat, a classic gothic haunted castle. And then Spike comes out, and he's got this really dorky looking costume. But at the same time, while I make fun. I know exactly how hard it is to make decent looking costumes, since I've done that kind of work before, mostly in theater, and that's actually pretty impressive what he's managed, if I'm being blunt. You think it's scary now? Um, you know, he's, he's got the, he's got the second head strat here, you know. Yeah, if Rarity helped him, he'd be set, you know. So, what? You get to stay over there for a minute, you're out of reach. Um, so... Spike is, of course, the first one who's like, well, hold on a second. You're out on Nightmare Night. Now, on the one hand, that's not a whale, that's a shark. That's also a shark. I don't know how many whales, now that I think about it. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> but, uh, Spike is the first one who actually recognizes, oh my god, Fluttershy's out on Nightmare Night. Now, granted, all she's really encountered is some random tones folk and kids and Big Mac and, uh, Granny Smith, but so you'd think at least someone would be like, oh my gosh, Spike's the first one who really has that reaction. What's interesting, though, is his second reaction immediately after it, which is, oh, you're going to join us, right? This is, that's my, my first really big topic here. How many of you like something? I know, it's a dumb question. <laughs> yeah, I don't like anything, personally. I hate water. Oh, I hate peanut brittle. Oh, and I hate Yoshi's. Oh. All right, so... <clears throat> you like stuff, right? Now, this one's a little more variable. But yeah, we like sharing what we like. Now, that's not universal. But sharing enthusiasm is near universal as a human trait. It is exceptionally common. Even people who are introverted still like sharing things they enjoy. Since an introvert is not, all, after all, someone who wants to not interact with people, it's someone who wants to interact with less of those people, or, you know, just one person, right? Um, or maybe on their own circumstances. You know, you got your core friends, you don't, you don't go out and encounter 50 people, you got your buddy and you go and you hang out and you watch a movie, right? Right? So, well, yeah, exactly. The very nature of streaming is at its very core, I mean, this is obviously a form of entertainment, that's what I put on my tax forms, but this is a form of sharing. Sharing what we like, sharing what we care about, sharing what we enjoy, sharing what we enthused. And yeah, I bet most of you in chat have had at least one time in your life where you've been like, oh man, I want to share blah, and you know, it, it falls flat, right? Oh, I know, Lord Haramont, that has not happened to me often. But when it does, 
Let me give you a direct example. I introduced my sister to Star Trek. She loved it. <laughs> now, she didn't get super into it, but she absolutely dug it when she was watching it with me. And there's just nothing quite like that sensation of, I love X, hey, you want to share X with me? And they love X too. It is a very unique sensation, and it is an awesome feeling. You see why I'm talking about this with regards to this episode. The episode makes it clear, and previous episodes have made it clear too, that they are all really into Nightmare Night. This is a big deal to them, and they love it, and they, sh they want to share it with Fluttershy, and they've never been able to. Now, obviously, you know, they're not trying to push it on her, because they're respectful. But there's still that just just under the surface, like, oh, but only if, if only you could try it out, it'd be so great. It's one of the reasons why, nowadays, I actually joke when it comes to things like anime. Because I get it. You guys love anime, and that's why you want to share it with me. And I don't love anime, and I've been exposed to an enormous amount of anime at this point in my life. Um, but I do get it, you know? It used to piss me off, like, way... like <laughs> In the heydays of when I first started streaming, it used to be an aggravation point for me. It isn't anymore. It hasn't been for a while. Because I got it. I, I processed it. It's, it's just you guys sharing enthusiasm. So I get it. So, <laughs> Fluttershy, you know, Spike emotionally blackmails her. But Spike is like, hey, maybe you should go ahead and, and join in. Because of the exact same thing I mentioned. Because he's into it, and they're into it, and they want to share it with their friend. Super logical. As the music clearly shows. Oh my god, I have something stuck in my eye and it's driving me nuts. Ah... You know what's funny, is I have yet to successfully introduce anyone to MLP. Not counting any of you guys, I mean people I know in person. That's okay, it's just, it is a legitimately good show, and thus I have tried a few times to be like, hey, nope. <laughs> you got a little bit of a reputation gap to overcome there. My niece introduced me to it, yeah. Not even deliberately, it was just kind of how that works. Anyways, so Twilight, you know, she shows up, and Twilight's like, hey, and, you know, Fluttershy's like, oh my god, I love how Twilight's first reaction is, are you okay? And again, the shared enthusiasm thing comes up. This is when the shared enthusiasm thing really comes up in the episode, because all five of them are like, yeah. Not in person, no, Baron. Most people know me well enough in person to, to not say that. I still get those comments on the VODs every now and again, but that's a separate matter. That's just the internet. Anyways, so, yeah, it's just like, oh, God, yes, let's let's do it. This is going to be awesome. Let's share in this. So let's get you a costume. Now, Rarity's point is actually a good one. And, you know, you don't have to dress up as something scary. You could just dress up, right? She is, of course, dressed up as a mermaid, and while we're here, I'm just going to comment that the outfits are actually super cool. Um, we've got uh, Roller Pinky, straight out of the disco era, Astronaut Rainbow Dash, Roman Twilight, my personal favorite, and Lion Applejack, which is just adorbs. Yeah. Um, good stuff, good stuff. I, I'm not going to fashion geek out. I know you hate it when I do that, but I just wanted to comment on that really quick. And yeah, Fluttershy could probably make her own. What's... Yeah, she keeps slapping her in the face. What's really funny is she keeps introducing her to these outfits. The only one that she was like, huh? To was the Vampire Fruit Bat costume. Interesting. Does Celestia have a space program? That's actually a good question. I don't know if that ever comes up. I would lean towards no. They're still working on their their frontier and their borders. They're, they're not ready to, to leave the planet yet. Luna might. Maybe. Um, so, uh, we got the smacking tail, we got the... So, I can't wear a dress. I might trip, which is a valid concern. I can't wear a mask. I might be able to see what's in front of me, which is an interesting concern, especially considering that she's a pony. And, you know, that's, that's the reason why blinders exist. Um, 
And then they, they see her in her black dress, and they're like, Oh my god, you're a such and such escaping into the night! Maybe you're this, maybe you're black licorice escaping into the night! I'm sorry, that, that actually got a laugh out of me. I had to share that one. Um, so, there's this really great series of visual gags. I'm not going to repeat word for word for you. As Fluttershy raises an objection, and they're just like, Okay. And they, like, shove Pinky off camera. Or they just, like... Maybe we'll go over here. My personal favorite, though, is when uh, they've got all the the candy bags up, and they've got and and Pinkie Pie's like, "Here you go, here." And she's like, "Well, what if I can't scream for help?" And Pinkie Pie, expressionlessly, just moves the candy bag away. Okay. Now this whole section actually is great, in my opinion, and I mean that legitimately. Because what's happening here is they are being supportive as much as they can be. They do, after all, really want her to, to be having fun. Like, that's the goal. They're not trying to push her, and they're hesitated and afraid to, to push her too far and too hard. And she is legitimately having issues, but she probably needs to be pushed a little bit more. So you, and, and you can beautifully see both sides of the equation here. Because on the one hand, uh, they actually really do want to share this, but don't want to push her. I mean, we know what that feels like, right? When someone tries to push something on you too hard. I'm sure most of you have experienced that in your lives as well. And I will admit, I have done that too, to my to my embarrassment. I, I obviously don't do that anymore. Um, but they, they really do want to not push too hard, but they still, it's like, eh, if you, okay, you don't have to. And on the other hand, she really does want to get into this, but she is having actual issues, and she's not getting over it. Neither side is particularly wrong here, and both of them really do, both groups, one individual and five individuals, really do care about each other. Yeah, there's a lot of friendship on display, as Lord Haramont so accurately puts it. I like it. It's good stuff. And again, it, it shows something I've talked about several times, how they weren't friends in the first two seasons. They are clearly friends now, and have been for a bit now, and they show it in stuff like this. Oh yeah, Spike is, I actually forgot Spike was there. But you're right, Spike is part of that. Kind of, sort of, maybe not really. So, then Twilight comes up with an idea which is quietly brilliant. Fluttershy's core problem and every objection she has raised has all been about uncertainty and unpredictability. The unknown, to put it simply and bluntly. Now, it makes sense. The unknown is probably the single most terrifying thing from a purely biological perspective, because... Animals will fear the unknown because it's unknown and therefore must be qualified as a threat. And sentient sapient beings fear the unknown because it could be whatever, right? So, you know what? Do you mind if I give you a small story just really quick? I was out skiing with my dad once. And this was at uh, Donner Pass. Which, uh, I, I know, get the jokes out of the way. We heard them all. But it's, it's a really good ski resort. But there's this one night we went out a little bit too early... And so everything was a little bit too slick. Now, I'm not going to tell you the punchline of the story unless you really want me to. Uh, it, it involves me you know, barreling down a uh, mountain, having lost my skis about 100 feet up. But I was absolutely terrified. Now, the reason why isn't because of heights or the skiing or even the slick. It was the fact that the slanting of it was such that and I'm going to try to explain this. It's going to sound weird. So you're going out, and then it goes down. That's pretty simple. Now, the slope only goes down briefly and then evens out tremendously. It's to get you that initial boost, and then you get the speed to carry your skis all the way down, right? But yeah, you, you, Rasker already figured it out. I couldn't see what was... I couldn't see over the ledge. So what it looked like, pretty much right up until the edge, was I was about to go over the ledge into the total unknown. I couldn't see past that lip. It was uniquely terrifying. And I have a pretty good control over my fear, especially at that age. Uh, you know, I was already in my 20s at that point. But just... Uh, and there, you, I could just feel my body physically seizing up as my, you know, live responses started taking over. Like, nope, nope. And I'm like, no, no, it's okay. I know it's okay. Intellectually, I know it's okay. 
need to... Now, the problem was, uh, because I probably should have actually backed away from it, or taken a moment to process it, because what ended up happening was I went over badly. And because I went over badly, I lost my angle, lost my left ski, and then I started doing this, and then kind of this. And so you just see this person doing this, <laughs> going down the, the slope. Lost my second ski somewhere, because they got the, the latch releases. Lost my second ski further up. Dad had to go back up and ski back down to pick him up. <laughs> At the time, and, and I, what's funny, I've actually told this story before. I actually stopped myself about halfway down and just sat there for a bit. Logically speaking, I should have just slid all the way back down to the bottom. I shouldn't have tried to stop myself. But at the time, I was mostly just kind of processing, you know? I was just like, okay... Okay. Rebooting. Please wait. <laughs> so I just kind of sat there halfway down the slope. <laughs> like like my arm digging into the, the mostly frozen snow to give myself perch. Like, okay. Okay. Give me a second. Dad's like, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I, I wasn't hurt at all. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <clears throat> but... The point is, sorry for going off on this tangent, the point is, it was that unknown which got to me, and led to the problems, too. And so I do like how they put, they shine a spotlight on the fact that the unknown is actually what's really bothering Fluttershy. Twilight's answer is thus actually quite brilliant. There will be no unknown if you are the GM, is what she effectively tells her. You be in charge of this. You do this. No unknown. Fluttershy immediately grasps onto the idea, because Twilight's right, and it is a great idea. It's like Twilight has the brain. I know, right? Sometimes she has the brain. Sometimes. Sometimes, well, you know. Anyways, so, yeah, awesome. Great idea, great idea. So, this then leads to the tea party. Now, what's interesting about the tea party is Fluttershy's ideas are good. They're badly presented, but there are good ideas there. And yeah, you'll notice that all of her fears, all of the, the horror that she showcases is social horror, which is a real thing, which I imagine several people in chat have actually experienced. No judgment. No judgment. And so the idea of trying to... It, this is what I'm going to call back to what I said earlier about Twilight's Castle. You remember how I talked about context? Context is what makes things scary. There's actually a, a second layer to that, and that would be presentation. Remember all the points I made about how they showed the castle, how it was dark, how it was the, this, this moon, and there's the swinging sign? That's presentation. And those are the two sides of horror right there, presentation and context. Fluttershy had the context, and I could absolutely see her thing, you know, her her little tea party thing, being legitimately scary if it was presented properly. And I wanted to point that out. Yeah, I like that essay, Ross. I wanted to point that out because it's a good it, it's a good showcasing of how creative she is and how she is has a legitimately good idea, she just doesn't really have the backing to make it done properly. It is also worth noting she wasn't really playing to her strengths yet. What is Flutter... I mean, Fluttershy has several strengths, but what's her biggest strength? What's, 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 which of her stats... You just noticed this? This is like... Wow. Um, <laughs> in fairness, it's supposed to be a beard, but it doesn't quite... like. It, there is hair here, but it doesn't visibly connect yet. It will eventually connect. But yeah, animal handling. What is her... Biggest, biggest stat, animal handling. And, I, I, skipping ahead a little bit in the narrative, that is exactly what she does later. She uses them to handle the presentation side of things. And, lo and behold, she nails it. But I'll come back to that in a minute. So I love the, the fact that Fluttershy is legitimately getting into this. Oh yeah, by the way, anime ponies. I love that Fluttershy is legitimately getting into this. And I love the fact that she's... Like, she's excited. Like, there's this little bit where she goes... Mm. Like, she's just waiting for people's reactions. Which is, of course, very discouraging because they don't react at all. Twilight's point is quite valid. This is very creative, what she did. And putting that together is actually pretty cool, too. 
And AJ and Pinkie Pie both have a valid point as well. She almost had an idea there. And it's true, because she did, as I've already pointed out. Proper presentation would have made that tea party terrifying. And yeah, she did all that inside of an hour, too, which is very impressive. So I like that. I like everything about this presentation and this showcasing and how they showed it. It's also worth noting, once again, the friendship is on display here, because Fluttershy wants them to have fun just as much as they want her to have fun. Pinkie Pie even hesitatingly offers, we could just stay here and hang out, and it's Fluttershy who says no. You guys look forward to this every year, all year. Go have fun. So, they decide to move on. Um, Angel decides to be her courage rather than the dick. <laughs> yeah, except Rainbow Dash, who's irritated me a little bit on this episode, I'll be honest. Um, and, uh, although I'll come back to that in just a second here. So they go to the actual maze. Now, the funny thing about the hedge maze, the cornrow maze, or whatever they call it, it's pretty standard, isn't it? And even in-universe it is, but I've actually been to mazes basically exactly like that, like two or three things different in real life. It's all the expected stuff. Now, they're still having fun, and there's nothing wrong with that. I want to clarify that. But the point is, they're going through, and they're like, <gasps> and then they all laugh, and then they move on. And then they see another thing, and then they laugh, and then they move on. It's just a light little thing, right? No big deal. And I point that out because it's not scary. Why would it be? It's the known. Then little tidbits start happening, which they're not aware of. Like, where's that coming from? Is this part of the thing? Uh, yeah, no, this is totally part of the thing, says AJ, lying terribly, as she always does when she tries to lie. Huh. Oh, God, where's this hole? Oh, God, this isn't part of the plan. And then, once again, we come back to that point, which I made earlier, the unknown. The mere, what, what's happening to them is actually not scary, if you really sit back and look at it. It is the fact that they have no idea what's happening or why that makes it scary. It is the unknown. Brilliant. This is a well-written episode, if it's not obvious, if, if, with my gushing. And yeah, AJ just kind of starts to panic a little bit more, a little bit more, and it's like, it's okay. It's okay, yeah, I noticed Derpy was dressed up as Twilight, but actually, I, I even have it in my notes here. And so they're just like, okay, what, what do we do? Um, how do we, how do we freak out? And yeah, the Granny Smith, Smith you know, skull popping off thing, and the cave, why is there a cave under the farm? You know, let, let's move on. Um, yeah, exactly, Lord Harriman. None of this is technically scary, it's just, why is this happening? Oh gosh, I don't know what's going on that is making it scary. Now, really quick side note. Did you notice that the Cutie Mark Crusaders are in full costumes there? I point that out because that was a deliberate design choice. Because this episode was actually released before the, uh, the Call of the Cutie Mark. Where they got their Cutie Marks. And they knew that the episodes were going to be reshuffled for release order that year. In order to line up with the anniversary and with the Halloween thing. So they put them in a full costume in order to prevent their cutie marks from being visible. Anyways. <clears throat> Cute. Uh, so, um, so, the cave and the worried. Uh, two, two interesting things come up. This is actually kind of amusing to me. The first thing is... Uh, they, they call a little bit too much attention to it. There's a little bit of a kid's show problem here. But Rarity trips on her dress because of Fluttershy's concerns about being able to run in a dress. And Pinkie Pie can't see in her mask because of Fluttershy's concerns about not being able to see in the mask. Anyways. So then they get they manage to get out, and then it's Flutterbat! <gasps> no! Now, side little tidbit here. I do really like how they actually literally animate her differently. Like, if you pay attention, and I freeze-framed it to check, um, she does look, she has the animation of Flutterbat until she comes into the light, and then she has a different model. Like, she has the stuff on her showing that it's fake. Just a little bit of an animation trickery there that they do. And yeah, she ruins poor Spike's costume. I think about how much time he spent on that. So, naturally, people like being scared, 
We've actually already talked about this in this very show. Pinkie Pie made this point all the way back in our first Halloween episode. Luna, the Luna one. Luna Eclipsed, I think, was the episode. Um, and they loved it. The moment they realized, the moment the fear has passed, the moment they finished going through the roller coaster and have come back for a stop, they're just like, yeah! Because that's how that works. Adrenaline, enjoyment, right? Like, that is basically how that works. You're terrified, and then you enjoy it. I mean, I, I, I actually am not 100% into that. I do enjoy, you know, uh, roller coasters and, you know, zooming along and Mach 20 by 5 billion. I'm not into the horror aspect, but I, I do understand it. So they're super jazzed. And yeah, Rainbow Dash, who you'll notice was one of the ones who crumbled the most and easiest, because of course she had 1 HP, is just like, God, that was incredible. You did that amazingly. And they're all like, oh, God, you got to do this every year. Please, please. God, that was so great. But of course, and you guys in chat have already pointed this out, Fluttershy, all she saw was like, oh, my God, they're so scared. I'm so sorry. Because, of course, her other big skill is empathy. This then leads to, there's two messages of this episode, but they both dovetie nicely into each other here. But the two big messages of the episode are really good messages, in my opinion. There's nothing wrong with trying new things, and there's nothing wrong with deciding it's still not for you. That's actually only one of the messages, but that is, that is a good damned message. Lots of people I have known personally need to learn that lesson. There's nothing wrong with reaching out a little bit. And there's nothing wrong with deciding no. Sometimes things are just coffee. I agree, Azeros. I agree. The shame of it is that... Oh, yeah, no kidding, my girl. The shame of it is she was quite good at what she did. And she, you know, animal handling. I mentioned that earlier. I already kind of talked about that. The other message of the episode, and... She says this one flat out. It's okay not to share everything with friends and family. It's okay to have, you know, varying circles of interest. Now, that's kind of a lesser message in my mind because A, duh, and B, they've actually already covered that one with the episode with uh, Discord and the ball and Fluttershy, right? Having different interests was kind of the main message there. You get it. So... The schmooze, who hopefully we'll never see again. <laughs> you get my point. But I do like the main message. Because usually fiction doesn't portray it that complexly, for lack of a better way to put it. Usually fiction's like, well, you need to try things. You need to try new stuff. The end. Or, um, you need to be okay with not accepting things and, and pushing things that are not okay out. The end. It is a more in-between, you know, more nuanced look at it to be like, there's nothing wrong with trying stuff, and there's nothing wrong with deciding it's not acceptable for you. My opinion. This, uh... I know, right, Osiris? This is a, a very good episode. I would very strongly argue this is a red, at the very least. What do you guys think? It is a it's a good emotional episode. It's a great character beat. It's got excellent writing. Um, it dovetails into itself twice, you know. Good stuff. I think I'm I'm not sure it's really purple because it doesn't have that extra little oomph that I usually require for a purple. But I do think it absolutely qualifies as a red. Surprisingly good episode to me by Natasha Levenger, who wrote "Make New Friends But Keep Discord," a yellow episode. It Ain't Easy Being Breezies, a yellow episode. And Pinky Apple Pie, which was a red for us. Surprisingly enough. And yeah, seeing Flutterbat was nice. Where's the... Ah, oh, there it is. There we go. Um, so with that, we'll chop off. <laughs> 